Good morning, folks, and welcome back to the homestead. Today is a garden cleanup day for me, and there is a lot to get done after being away in Missouri for a week. I decided to do this video as a voiceover because honestly, recording something makes the work takes four times as long, and it's way easier to chat with you about the garden while you listen to the lovely sounds of garden chores. You'll have to excuse my wardrobe, but since it's so hot in the summers, I tend to do my garden chores in the morning, and that means I am not changing out of my pajamas to do work. So that's what I'm wearing. And the water noise you hear is my drip system pressure valve. I need to get a new one, and it currently drips about a five gallon bucket of water during its 30 minute cycle, which is fine, because then I just use that bucket it filled to water my potted trees that I have next to the fencing. But because of that faulty pressure valve, I constantly have lines bursting throughout the garden. It has been a real chore maintaining these drip system lines. And I suppose it's just harder this first year because it's obviously my first time doing it. But I, with how hot it is here, I'm constantly worrying about whether or not certain beds are getting watered. I'm having to fix lines all the time. So I just need to go to the store and get a new pressure valve, really. It's, it's as simple as that and it would ease so much of my pain. <laughs> so today I am mostly just doing a bunch of weeding and pulling of Bermuda grass, both in the beds and outside of the beds as you see here under this Armenian cucumber plant I have. Most of the weeds that I have are silver leaf nightshade, which is what I'm pulling out right now. It's a very common weed in the southwest and in this area. It's one of my most prolific weeds that I have growing here, and it is so prickly. There are just major, major uh, like spines on its stems and its leaves. I have to wear gloves to pull it up. And it's a, it's a noxious weed here. Uh, most of the weeds here are prickly or toxic in some way, and I am just thoroughly convinced that most of the plants in the southwest are trying to kill me. But otherwise, I'm just trying to control the Bermuda grass. I'm, I'm obviously not pulling it up by the roots. If any of y'all are familiar with Bermuda grass, it grows in several ways both through seed and through underground rhizomes. So I just like to take away the top layer of the grass and make it, you know, a clear path and then pull out the big weeds such as the silver leaf nightshade. It really only gets bad right outside of these beds. Obviously I live in the desert, so there's no rain. It's it's not a really good environment for weeds either because there's no water, but right next to the beds where all of this water drips down, I get a lot of runoff. And so just right outside of here is where I usually have to do all of my weeding. So I've had several squash plants die in the last couple weeks. I, I do have a large squash bug problem, which I try to control. Sometimes they get the best of me, and other times it's just the heat. I, I do grow a lot of squash that isn't super heat tolerant, and once you get 105 plus for a couple days, they just peter out. So I just pulled out a Traumatina squash that, that wasn't doing well from the beginning, so I'm not that worried about it. And then here I have an Amish paste tomato, which I went over in my last video. I, this, this tomato has done poorly for the last two years for me. Here you can see these tomatoes are literally just cooking on the vine. So I'm just going to take this whole plant out. You can see it's completely dead. And I just won't be growing this one again, and that's okay. You know, I, I gave it two years two good running years to test it out, see how it would work, and it failed me both. It's only one plant, I only had one survive from the get-go, so I will just have to find another paste tomato <laughs> to be growing here in the desert southwest, something that is more 
suited to this environment, I did receive a comment from a subscriber who lives in the area that uh, she does well with San Marzano's, which is a paste tomato. So I will be trying those next year for sure. But as for right now, this Amish paste is just taking up space and I could be using that space for something else, such as beans or okra, something that grows quickly before you know the whole summer is over. I still have about 120 days left in my growing season, which gives me plenty of time to grow something else. Now I, I will be taking this tomato out. I'll, I'll give all the unripe tomatoes to the chickens, and as long as they're green, they're good to feed to the chickens. You do not want to feed the tomato plant itself, like the stems or the leaves, to chickens because it is toxic. Um, it contains high levels of a toxin that is no good for anyone to eat, humans or animals. But the fruits themselves are safe. And I also will not be throwing any of the stems into the compost. Now that is, it's okay technically if your tomatoes are not diseased. But as a general rule, because I don't do a whole lot of disease identification, obviously this plant died from heat. There was no disease that I could see on it. It just died slowly over time. The tomatoes are clearly just suffering. It, it definitely died from heat, but as a general rule, I keep all of my tomato scraps, the plants, the dead plants, out of the compost just to not spread disease. Now that's not a hard and fast rule for me for all plants. Um, obviously, the leaves drop in the soil. There's going to just be disease spread no matter what, but because tomatoes are so hard to grow here, I do my best not to encourage disease from continuing, so I just burn all of my tomato plants. I'm setting these in a separate pile. Uh, most of the weeding and stuff I do today, that will go in the compost, but tomato plants are definitely, I n never, ever put them in the compost. And once I've cleared out this Amish paste, the great thing about having this extra space is I get to trellis my tomatoes that are just going everywhere. As you've heard in my previous videos, I don't do a whole lot of tomato pruning. I know a lot of people will tell you prune your tomatoes to prevent disease, but here in the southwest, we're not humid. We don't get a whole lot of rain. It doesn't leave a lot of room for disease to spread easily. The best thing is to have your tomatoes have a lot of foliage because they will just help shade each other out, reduce the amount of heat on them. So I don't do a whole lot of pruning in the beginning of the summer. Now once the monsoon starts in August and September, I will do a lot more pruning because that is when we will get that humidity and disease prevalence. But for now, all of these extra leaves are just helping to shade the tomato plants and help me keep growing tomatoes through the hottest months of the year. So now that I have this extra space, I'm just going to use this part of the trellis to tie up my, uh, what was it? It was a German pink and a giant crimson tomato. They were going everywhere, laying on the ground. So I am just tying them up here and helping them to grow to the best of their capabilities. And here I have my one by four beds of beans. Now these beds are solely used for trellising. I've made them, it's just a one foot wide bed so that I could hang trellising pants. I, I, I did last year the Mexican gherkins or also called cucumelons. They didn't do that well. They didn't like the sun as much as I thought they would. So I've just done beans this year and what I have in these two beds on each side is the purple hole pink eye cowpea. They started out very bushy, <laughs> bushier than any other cowpea I've grown, but they have since taken off and they're about four feet tall up this trellis. And I keep finding little runners that I have to 
weave into the cattle panel so that they don't run into the walkways. So that's what I'm doing here is just finding little runners that I can put up through and hopefully I will start getting beans soon because I have not gotten any beans off of these guys yet. I have a ton of blossoms, but they are running perfectly and they look so healthy. They got a bit of a slow start, but I'm very pleased with how they are doing now. Part of my general cleanup for the garden includes pruning. So that, that's going to mean pruning dead leaves off of plants, pruning dead plants in general like the Amish paste, and pruning basil. There are not a whole lot of herbs that I can grow in the summertime here in the desert. Basil is one of those herbs that I can grow. Mint is also another one. But unfortunately, because it's so hot, basil goes to seed really quickly. Now, I have never noticed a difference in my basil, the way it tastes when it goes to seed. That could just be because it always goes to seed here in the summer almost immediately. It, it all tastes delicious to me, but I still like to take all of the seed pods off um, pretty regularly so that it just keeps growing foliage. I mean, if you let it go to seed all the way, then it will eventually stop producing foliage at all and die back because that is a plant's goal. It, its goal is to produce seed and become the next generation and die. Every, every living being's goal is to reproduce. So I just want to take all of this seed pods and flowers off as often as possible let it get as big and bushy as possible fully foliage so i can keep harvesting um so i i prune pretty regularly probably once a week because it is so hot here that as soon as i take these flower heads off it will again start to produce more flower heads but it still keeps growing so this is part of my weekly monthly everyday <laughs> chore list that I have is pruning my basil just to make sure I keep getting basil through all of the year. Another herb that I have to prune pretty regularly, this is not a culinary herb, so this is yarrow. I have talked extensively about yarrow. It is one of my favorite medicinal herbs. You don't really eat it, but you do use it medicinally. It grows like a weed here in my garden. It does not grow naturally. It requires a bit more water than the desert provides, but it loves the heat. And it gets so big, it's shading out all of these pepper plants, as you can see. And it takes pruning quite well. I'm, I'm being pretty vicious with it right now. Um, but it, it gets really tall when it flowers. So, you know, maybe once or twice a month I'll come through and just shave off the whole top of it, just so it's not shading out these pepper plants that are here in the same bed. It will grow back just fine, but I do like to keep it pruned. I could use all of these leaves and stems for medicine, I could dry them out, but honestly, I, I harvest so much. I have so many euro plants in my garden. I just throw it to the chickens and they love it. Here we are looking at the in-ground garden which is overrun with weeds and Bermuda grass that I try to keep up on, but it's hard, especially with the Bermuda grass. This was taken the next day. I had to go to work the previous day. So I am, this is a two day video. I'm still out here weeding. And as you can see, it is Full of gnats. I have my uh, mosquito net on my head and I, I you can see the gnats in the video. They're pretty bad right now. It's an overcast day. It did sprinkle for a bit. I, we maybe got like five drops of rain which isn't isn't anything worth talking about but at least it was overcast. It was much cooler. It was a beautiful evening despite not being able to see the evening through my mosquito net. <laughs> so here I am fighting Bermuda grass constantly. I do sheet mulch my beds 
every season. At that that includes when the beginning of the spring season and the beginning of the fall season. I lay down cardboard and wood chips, but Bermuda grass is persistent and I don't use herbicides in my garden. I am an organic gardener, but mostly organic as much as I can be, um, but I, I really do not use any herbicides. So most of this work is done by hand and most often I do it by visiting my garden every day. I am out here as much as I can be because I love it. So I pull up weeds when I see them. I pull up bits of Bermuda grass when I see them. And Bermuda grass is controllable um, when you just hammer on it all the time. So I can attest to the fact that it will eventually go away if you mess with it enough. Because I used to have, my whole property used to be covered in Bermuda grass. When I bought this property in 2020, it was beautiful and full of grass. And then four dogs playing and running around constantly and the chickens, they just wore it down and it disappeared. And without any rain, it doesn't really grow back. Unfortunately, with the drip system here, it has the perfect environment to grow prolifically, but I know if I keep on top of it, I will eventually beat it. And I continually mulch and sheet mulch every season. Some of these, as you can see, I'm pulling out roots. They aren't too established. Just keeping on top of it, doing 15 minutes of work a day will eventually control it. And this video, this, this entire process took maybe two full hours of work. Um, from start to finish, I took out a bunch of weeds, a ton of Bermuda grass, and just cleaned up the garden. And, and you know, that's all it takes, little by little. Here <laughs> is catnip. Catnip is amazing. I have talked about it before in an herbal video. I can link that above. It's one of my go-to herbs for a sleepy time tea. It grows great. I have been nothing but surprised on how well catnip grows in my area for the desert southwest. Of course it needs water. It's, it does not grow naturally here. You will not find it on the roadsides, but it loves the heat and it just keeps going. It is a perennial herb. So this lasted the last winter just went down to little nubs, grew back in the summer, and it just constantly keeps growing. I shave it just like I shave yarrow. Just chop it off as much as you want and it will continue growing. So I'm not worried about hurting it here. I am just trying to clear the area for other plants. And I love doing this work. I, I hope this doesn't feel like a chore to you guys or that I feel like I'm doing a chore. Gardening for me is like meditation. So instead of sitting down and watching TV or just zoning out, doom scrolling, I love getting out in the garden and just putting my hands in the dirt. And I don't want you to think that it takes this much time all the time. Honestly, I don't... It, the garden kind of got away from me. We've been on a lot of vacations lately. But it, it doesn't take this much work at one time all the time. If you just come out to your garden, you know, 15 minutes a day, pull the weeds that you find, you know, pull some Bermuda grass, you shouldn't have to do this kind of work for two days in a row, <laughs> for a couple hours. It's really easy to maintain your garden if you just visit your garden. And I, I do visit my garden. I just, I've been I've been gone for a little while. But this doesn't bother me either. I it's I just put in some headphones, listen to a podcast, listen to some music, or don't put anything at all and just listen to the sound of the birds. It's relaxing for me. This this is my meditation. And I love it. But it I don't want you to feel like it's daunting to be spending hours and 
two separate days out here doing work when it doesn't take that much if you just do a little bit of work every day. Oh, now these are the Yukon. No, they aren't. Yukon. They're the Corolla potatoes that I have been needing to harvest for a while that I just did not get around to. Um, I was hoping they would grow bigger with more water, but they are just not doing that well. I have had a terrible potato year. I've got some good ones here. I've also got a couple green ones. But generally my potato harvest was abysmal this year. I'm not quite sure what happened. I don't know if it was a fertilization issue. I'm erring on the side of a watering issue just because I'm working with this drip system that is absolutely brand new to me. So maybe I just didn't have the drips in the right place. I've also had a lot of problems with the drip system, as in them just not working in general. Um, that was a green potato you just saw me put back in the ground. So any potatoes that I find that are green, um, obviously you can't eat those. They're too high in solanine, which is a toxic compound. It won't kill you. It'll just make you sick. Uh, I just throw them back in the ground. I've gotten fall potatoes before. And so why not? Otherwise, they'll be food for the bugs, they'll be compost, but I can't eat them regardless, and they're not good for the chickens either. So what else to do with them besides try and grow more potatoes? Well, that's all I've got for you folks today. I'm going to keep pulling Bermuda grass until the cows come home. I hope I can give you some information you can use. And if not, then just a little bit of peace. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.